Good day, I'm Play from Cybercast, the podcast at cybercast.com. C Y B R C A S T dot com. Yeah, that's right. No E. <laughs> Uh, and also from cwdaily.com, cwdaily.com. Um, today I was supposed to try to stream to YouTube, but since I guess I never streamed before, it takes 24 hours to set that up. So I figured I'll just set up my iPhone to record a little short snippet. I am a podcaster, a photographer and an all-around rebel. No, I'm kidding. Uh, but I am a podcaster and Cybercast is a podcast with my co-host Dick Daly, Ty Pollock, and Tosh Pollock. And it's usually based around topics that happen uh, in, the, in the world involving technology. Very often it's Apple. Um, we have an awesome segment called The Music Corner that Tosh heads up, which is just a phenomenal, phenomenal section. He actually has a section called the MVP where he delves into someone who is a, an MVP in, let's say, a band. Like the last MVP was Ben Bram from the Pentatonix uh, group, a cappella group. With amazing, amazing group. As most people I would imagine those are big youtubers uh, now big time stars um, but yeah so today actually I want to talk about something that is my life which is photography um, and just actually uh, I, I would actually encourage people to to get the Fuji 645 professional it's a GA645 professional it's a 645 camera and um, it is probably the greatest point-and-shoot uh, camera out there this is uh, something that you want to make sure when you're taking pictures you don't cover this up so that it, that it doesn't affect your exposure uh, negatively hold it like this and you'll be very happy with the, the images created. Um, I have film in here so I can't open it, but basically 645 is a format that rather than a 35 millimeter normally or six by seven format normally or six by six, which is square, of course. Um, 645 in most cameras is actually portrait, which is rather cool if you're doing portraits. Now this camera is not the greatest for portraits. Um, it has a 60 millimeter f4 lens which is a beautiful lens. F Fuji makes, really knows how to make, still does know how to make a great um, lens. They know how to make lenses. They really do. Um, in the digital world, my my main camera, this is a film camera, of course, as I said before, but my digital uh, camera, the main camera for me in my digital world is a Sony A7, the original. I'm not one of these A7 3ers. Um, I actually use a bunch of cameras. Today, I was actually shooting with the, the D5100, which is another really good and really cheap to get. 35 millimeter uh, crop sensor uh, digital camera, um, and it has uh, the ability to to flip around your LCD and not mess it up. I actually don't use the LCD. Actually, I don't really use the LCD on my Sony A7 either. Um, it's basically just informational uh, data that I show. I don't like. I don't want. Uh, I don't want the data, the pictures to keep showing up. So, and it actually helps to uh, save battery life. So here's my main camera in the digital world, which is the Sony A7 with, right now on here is the 90 millimeter macro. It's a great lens. 
It's really good for portraits actually. It's a 2.8 aperture lens and I don't know, my hands aren't too big so they, it actually fits my hand really well, the camera. You know, really, really well. But yeah, I'm actually not here to talk about the Sony today. I'm here to talk about the, the Fuji GA645. If you can find one of these and it's going for around, I would say, $250, which is really a great deal. I think I bought mine for $150, I think, maybe $200. Um, and of course, now the prices have gone up because pe people are realizing how 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 great of a point and shoot camera this actually is I mean because you could set it to to just auto and you could set it to just auto and it actually does a great job the auto is the main the first dial when you turn it oh wait this is not doing good okay, there you go auto then we have aperture and we have manual which I don't know why anyone would want to use this in manual because if you if you use this in manager you have aperture and then to do shutter speed you actually have to hit the um, this time value button and then adjust which is a little bit frustrating and then they also have actually this is autofocus right um, but they also have a manual focus button here which actually steps it up like it has a step sort of stepping focus system instead of like an actual autofocus, uh, sorry, a manual focus, it sort of steps to where the uh, the lens will put it in focus. Which again, another one of these things that I don't see the point of using the manual focus. Just turn it into a autofocus, just put it in pro on program mode or put it in aperture priority mode, which is usually what I use it in mostly. Um, the film that I have in here now is the MPH 400 by Fuji. I got this, it's expired in 2000. I got this actually at, at a thrift store. It, the thrift store had had this on the shelf and they were selling it for I think like five bucks and I offered them a dollar and they said yeah. So got it for a dollar. And since it's expired, I'm actually exposing it. This is uh, C41 by the way. And I'm, I'm actually exposing it at I'm actually exposing it at, at um, what do I have it set at? 100. So I have it ex set at 100 and uh, just develop it, which I do myself. Um, C41, by the way, is about the easiest film to develop. It really is. Black and white, do you have so many variables for black and white? With C41, it is basically just set the temperature based on the temperature go out with the times all of the different developers have the times set for you so i would say if you're new to film always aim for the color film first or c41 i should say because you have back on c41 um aim for that first because it is the easiest to develop and um that you don't even like develop it yourself at home i would say start out with 35 millimeter like get a cheap um get a cheap point and shoot camera something like the nikon one touch um get one of these really cheap you know i think i got this for i don't know 10 bucks or so and the, the images that come out of this thing are amazing it's a 35 millimeter uh 2.8 lens um it's out of focus it really is just point and shoot and um put some c41 film in it um if you can get something like uh get some fuji or something that dries flat like H, like Ilford, which I uh, don't shoot as much. I usually shoot a lot of Kodak stuff, and um, but it's a pain in the butt to uh, to to scan it because what I do when I scan, and that's why I have the macro lens right now on my Sony, is I put it on a light pad and scan that. 
I use one of these light pads and I scan the film on this. Um, the macro lens allows me to get nice and close, to focus one to one, and the images that you get out of this thing are phenomenal. Um, you basically have to invert uh, the levels so that it goes from you know the negative to a positive. Um, and I haven't done it in Lightroom yet. I do use, use Lightroom for mobile photography, but it is really, really easy to do it in Capture One Pro 11. So you could, you could have this stuff digitized at home so easy. And actually, you'll be able to use your raw workflow with your images and, and not have to have a, something like the Epson V550, which I have over there. Um, that one probably will give you like six megapixels with your 35 millimeters. It, it, it should give you more with medium format, which is um, what the 645 is, of course. But it is not going to, it's not going to be able to, the Epson scanner is not going to be able to match a 12 megapixel camera, a 16 megapixel camera. It definitely won't match like something 42 megapixels, you know, some of the newer cameras. Um, so I, I think the, the best way to go about digitizing this stuff is to scan it on the light light table. Um, and with the light table or light pad, um, and this one is nice and small, you just basically, you know, focus one image, manual focus, and, you know, do something like F, F8 or something like that. Um, ISO 100, just take a picture. And actually what I do is I, I, I attach it to Capture One Pro so that the images get saved to the computer rather than the memory card and I, I create a session instead of like importing it directly into my catalog um, and just take a picture slide take a picture slide take a picture slide because it's very easy it's it's manual focus so it's not gonna need to refocus again it's set to the focus um, and it'll be on the plane of the film so uh, that's really the easiest easiest way to, to do it and it's so so fast I mean you could do a whole roll of 36 and once you do the first image it's I would say I don't know uh, each every two images is a minute you know just just slide picture slide you know snap slide snap and I use I, I, I should use a trigger but I use just a two second delay right to click and then two seconds it takes a picture click two seconds it takes a picture so really it's like a picture every five seconds really just snap you know snap every five seconds it really is that easy um, so I would say uh, if you can see one of these for really cheap pick one of these up if it's still you know going for really high like you know 350 400 um, and you do think that you're going to you know like photography uh, with film uh, or you have already been shooting with with film cameras um, step up to this one like if you've been shooting with something like the point shoot that I showed you um, step up to this one and see if it is something that you'd like um, because you believe me you'd be able to sell this again for probably what you paid for it um, all right so the Fuji GA645. Give that a try. And uh, yeah, comment below. Let me know what, uh, what you think about it if you do have one. And if you don't have one and you want me to go more into it, let me know. I'll, uh, maybe I'll do one of these a day in the life walking with this camera and take pictures and then develop them, scan them, and then you know, upload a, a video with, with, this, uh, with uh, the results. All right, so I am Clay. Uh, I do a podcast, like I said, at Cybercast, C Y B R C A T C Y B R C A S T uh, dot com. That's the website, or just look in any of your podcatcher apps, like Overcast or Pocketcast, uh, Podcast dot app, or any of the other Android versions that are out there. Um, and my website is at cwdaily.com. Thanks for watching.